Right. So we're here with Bailey Lukanen, who is a technician with the South Dakota Soil Health Coalition. Um, we talk soil health what, regardless of conditions on grasslands, but it's especially important in the context of now it seems like we maybe hopefully have turned the corner. I wouldn't advocate that that the drought is busted by any means in in at least a third or two thirds of the state, but there's green grass. There's a reason for hope uh, for those ranchers with livestock to graze this summer, uh, but yet we're not out of the woods, Bailey. I think you'd probably agree. Um, the green is simply a sign of hope, but for those that maybe still have more livestock than their land is capable of carrying if, if things don't change significantly in the next few weeks, I heard there's a resource called the South Dakota Grazing Exchange that you might be able to fill us in on. Absolutely. So um, it's going to be more important than ever to not be overgrazing in our pastures, um, and it's always important, but especially in a drought season. So. Um, if we can find people near us who might have ground that they're not utilizing livestock for livestock grazing, um, and we can kind of build that relationship and make that partnership, um, that's really beneficial for everybody. So uh, the South Dakota Grazing South Dakota Grazing Exchange, which is at SouthDakotaGrazingExchange.com, is a website where we can come together. Um, so what essentially what you do is you go onto the website. You create a pin, whether you have livestock that you're looking to place or land that you're looking to get livestock on. Um, you create a pin and then everybody else can see that pin and they can make that connection. So I just looked this morning, there was about 30 pins in the state of South Dakota and only six of them were land available. So it is more important than ever for people who might have ground available for grazing um, to create a pin on there. Now, you can create like a grassland pin. You could also create crop residue um, or cover crops. So um, it might be an opportunity to, to get out on some farm ground and graze livestock this year um, and just make that connection. We do have other resources on there as well, different examples of contracts, the branding laws, things like that. So just feel free to click around and play and see what you find. You will see that a lot of other states surrounding us are developing um, a grazing exchange as well, and their pins will also show up on um, that map. So it's interactive. Feel free to, free to click around and, and see what you find. Now, Bailey, uh, these pins, are there is there a name and telephone number associated or what what kind of data is put out there for either a landowner or someone who's looking for grazing? Yeah, so you kind of choose um, what information you want put out there. You can just put your name and email address if you want. Um, you can put your name, email address and phone number. Um, you don't have to put, you know, your home address or anything like that. Um, and and it places the pin near where you choose to put it, but they're not given an exact address of where that is located um, until that connection is made and you've actually conversed. Super, very good. Now, now you mentioned something that, that hadn't even come to my mind for those that are near the river or are willing to put wheels under livestock um, for longer distances, you know, probably in the Missouri River. I take for granted living as far west river as I do that uh, brand inspection laws apply when you cross that river. Um, so so very good resources there too if if this is maybe an adventure that somebody has not undertaken before. Yes, absolutely. And we just want everyone to be aware of those laws. Um, if you are put in a scenario where they really come into play, um, certainly don't want anyone to to you know get in trouble or anything like that. So for sure, for sure. Um, and a wonderful resource that the connection was able to be made with our soil health coalition to the neighboring states that are developing a grazing exchange as well that could prove really important for those that live near a border yes you know, absolutely. The, the closest the closest resource may indeed be just across the state line instead of right here at home in south dakota yeah and where i am i looked this morning and there was a couple of pins in minnesota and you know that's really not too far from me and the same would be for the western side of the state if you wanted to kind of venture into Wyoming, Montana, um, those areas. So. So how best 
do we spread the word? We being the larger audience that maybe just is learning about the grazing exchange um, for the very first time when they watch this video. Um, I think being interactive on social media and sharing posts about the grazing exchange, um, but also just those conversations that happen, you know, in the coffee shop, at the elevator, wherever it may be, the sale barn, um, just getting the word out there about this resource and this website and hopefully getting more people um, to get on there and get interactive, especially those that have land available. Um, in my situation this summer, I found a, a small pasture that I wouldn't have found if it wasn't for just in-person conversations. Um, and I can you know, guarantee that there's a lot of landowners that just simply don't know about it. Um, and if they did know about it, they would be using this resource, so. Is there a cost for using the grazing exchange? No, it is absolutely 100% free um, to the user. Great. Um, boy, that sh should cover it. Can you cover the web address again, Bailey? Yes, so that is sdgrazingexchange.com. Um, and like I said, you will see some of the other states on there, but you can toggle around on the map and it's interactive, so. Okay. A uh, wonderful resource for landowners and livestock owners alike. Um, I could see a number of applications uh, for this, not only for that direct communication, if, if we don't have somebody on the line, but uh, you know, somebody who just inherited some land and doesn't have those connections in the local neighborhood, this might be a way for them to get it out there. Uh, if there's a lot of new landowners in South Dakota that maybe haven't made all the neighborhood connections, um, so, so this might be a way for, for our local residents to, to get in contact with some of those folks. And I understand uh, that there is an app in development, but that's not yet released. Is that true? Um, there is a mentor app that is going to be coming out. It's called Growing Connections, um, and that'll be on the, uh, uh, you know, an app on phone. There'll be Apple and Android. Um, we're getting close as far as I understand, kind of in the finishing stages. So we will be sharing more about that very soon. OK, and, and that just goes right alongside with of, of uh, you know, building relationships and, and being on somebody else's land. What better way to to build a lasting relationship than to treat that land well? And, and the mentor network could be one of those tools that helps us step up our management game. Absolutely, absolutely. Just to ask those questions, see what other people are doing in your area, um, people that you might, you know, not even know, and and just see what they're doing and see if it would work on your operation or how you could tailor it to your operation and make those management changes. Sure. What other resources does the South Dakota Soil Health Coalition offer that might be good for landowners that, um, courtesy of the circumstances they're faced with right now, um, you know, maybe there's there's time in the calendar this summer where there hasn't been in the past to to advance their learning. Absolutely. So uh, we really work hard to host different events throughout the summer, throughout the entire year. Really, um, we have some smaller sit downs um, throughout the state throughout the year. But our main um, event that I would really encourage producers to get signed up for is our soil health school, which takes place at the end of August every year. Um, it is a very hands on intense two and a half to three days of learning. Um, there is some classroom setting, some field setting, um, and it is the best of the best that you are learning from um, scientists and researchers from all over, um, but specifically the best in South Dakota. Um, they have a lot of South Dakota based knowledge, which is really important for our producers. Um, the number of registrations is very limited. We try to keep the class small so that we have those good connections um, and we can just really come together and learn together. So I would encourage you to get signed up quickly uh, because I think they are about half full already for this year. So you can find that application on our website, the South Dakota Soil Health Coalition website um, and get registered there. Okay. To the rancher who maybe has a diversified farm slash ranch um, that thinks, well, I'm I'm mostly a cow guy. I don't need to go to soil health school. How would you respond to him or her? I would tell him <laughs> that we have cows and we will have sheep this year as well. Um, and we 
there is a large focus on grazing at the soil health school. Um, we have livestock there. We help you, um, you know, lay out a small patch and see how much they've grazed and do all of your grazing calculations. Um, there are a lot of breakout sessions that are livestock oriented, which is really, really cool. So I think it's for everybody. I don't think that it is just for the crop producers. I think it is definitely for the livestock producers as well. As I said, we're going to have sheep this year, which is going to be new. Um, and I'm really, really excited about that because we're always, you know, talking about diversity. And so this really just pulls it all together. Yeah. Well, there's no more appropriate place than talking with a representative of the Soil Health Coalition to breeze through those five principles of soil health. So, of course, first we've got to keep it covered. We've got to minimize or eliminate disturbance. We've got to uh, have living roots in the soil for as many days of the year as possible. Bailey already mentioned improving diversity, and she also already mentioned incorporating livestock. These principles apply regardless of land use, so uh, viewers or listeners, we hope that regardless of your particular operations uh, land use base, that uh, you're implementing these principles to the degree possible and improving your land while doing so. So Bailey, I really thank you for your time. Um, folks can, can connect with you either through the website, South Dakota Soil Health Coalition, um, or the sdgrazingexchange.com, correct? Absolutely, you can find my contact info, I think on both of those sites, for sure, the South Dakota Soil Health Coalition site. Um, and we do have another uh, soil health technician in the southern part of the state. Um, so, you know, if you wherever you're located, whoever you wanna contact, and um, we would be happy to, to talk with you and direct you to different resources that we have um, or just help you through different scenarios. For sure. And I and we don't want to uh, forget the one if if our viewers are mostly West River that we've got Dave Ola at Newell as well. Now he's not full time like Bailey and Austin is, um, but uh, just the same. He is a, an important resource and, and one that a lot of folks recognize his name from from his previous occupations as well. So an excellent resource for you guys out there. Mm -hmm. So. Wonderful. Well, thank you for your time, Bailey. We hope that this is valuable and, and uh, given the content, I, I think it sure will be. So thanks. thanks. Mm -hmm.